What's up, old school homies? Let's talk about can people really tell the age of a rock? This is something that I kind of dismissed in my own mind long ago because I just wasn't going to go too far into it. I'm just a rock collector, so I'll figure it out later sort of thing. <laughs> but now that we're figuring it out, let's break it down. I have some examples of rocks here that are basically uh, <coughs> same as each other and different. I mean, there's some quartzite and some chalcedony right here, so what's different about these two? I found them pretty close to each other, you know, within like 10 miles, so I would say they're the same age, right? I mean, they're, they're in the same place. Well, things have moved around quite a bit. <laughs> You can't just say because you found two rocks in the same spot that they're the same age. Because a lot of different things happen. I found this one there too. Just another quartzite. So people would say this Chalcedony is 5 to 10 million years old. And this quartzite is 700 million to 4 billion years old. Like... Sometimes on the conservative level, people will say quartzite is 1.5 billion years old. And uh, why, why doesn't this one get much credit? I usually hear 1 million years old on this one. 5 to 10, that's just being like nice to say that this one's that old. And these are just common knowledge. This isn't real knowledge. Both of these rocks are the same age to me. If you take it far enough into theory, this rock makes up this rock too. Does quartzite turn into Chalcedony? I think so. I don't think we've documented it. Maybe we have. If this rock breaks down, which it is right now, it's weathering. It's. I found it broken off into a piece and it's hard to break quartzite at all. It's so hard. It's the same rock as this, but it's broken down into a whole bunch of pieces of dust and smashed together at high temperature and pressure until it turns into, like, sand glass. And you can tell the way that it breaks off. It ain't breaking off like a piece of glass. This one just breaks off like glass. So you give this one a lot more credit, right? We say this is way older. Yeah, you know... Take that guy aside, too, because he knows what he's talking about as far as how long did it take for this rock to become itself after being this rock first. They're just different places in the rock cycle. But my whole theory is that they're the same age due to the fact that this one will turn into this one just the same as this one turned into that one. I mean, the rock cycle goes all the way around, people. All the way, so. I mean, here's another quartzite I found in the area that looks a little bit more similar to it. It's the same stuff. There's there's other stuff in quartzite, too. There could be other stuff in Shell Sydney. I'm not trying to really just funnel this down into two different rock types. I'm trying to widen up the scope of your mind into thinking about rocks as being able to be as old as possible. I mean, the great thing that I have come across lately is the whole nonconformity, unconformity thing. This is a type of rock that people are talking about that don't know how to describe it. I mean, there's a layer of rocks, right? And they just call it unconformity because they can't explain it. The rocks below, they say, are extremely old. And the rocks above, they say, are kind of old. But in the middle of them is not actually rock. It's just like a layer of no rocks. 
that kind of constitutes 27% of the world's time. So it really kind of threw everybody for a loop there on that one. We were dating rocks really well until we hit that layer of unconformity. So try to name something unconformity. That sounds like a pretty undecisive name to me. <laughs>